Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and in my last video, I camped out all night at Micro Center and with a whole lot of luck, I was able to buy one of the very few RX 6800s they had on launch day. You can check out that full review here or find the link in the description below. Today, I'm following up on that review and I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step how to first enable smart access memory and then how to dial in a stable overclock on the RX 6800 or any AMD graphics card. Let's start with smart access memory. What it is, requirements to run it, and how to enable it. First, Smart Access Memory, or SAM, is actually a PCI specification known as resizable bar support that's been around for a while. However, gaming hardware is just now starting to take advantage of it. In short, at best, it allows your CPU to see and map all of your VRAM, potentially allowing for much faster texture buffering, meaning higher FPS. At worst, According to AMD and the limited testing I've done, it has no adverse effect on performance, meaning if you can enable it, it can't hurt. However, to take advantage of SAM, you currently need three things, a Ryzen 5000 series CPU, an AMD RX 6000 series graphics card, and a B550 or X570 motherboard with an updated BIOS with resizable bar support. Now. There is no button you can just click that says smart access memory on it. It has to be enabled in bio. So let's look at that. So restart your PC and press delete or F2 to access your BIOS when prompted. I'm using an Asus motherboard. So your BIOS menu may look different depending on your motherboard. My BIOS started in easy mode. So to switch to advanced mode, I can press F7. Now, one more requirement to be able to enable SAM is to be sure CSM support is disabled. So this should be found in the boot menu. So use the right or left arrow key to get to that menu. And here you should see CSM or compatibility support module. Select that and make sure it's disabled. Now, a couple of caveats on this. If it was enabled, you may or may not be able to disable it depending how and where your operating system was installed. In most cases, if your OS is installed on an M.2 device and it was installed with CSM enabled, you can disable it. However, in some instances, if your OS was installed with CSM enabled or is installed on a SATA drive, you may or may not be able to disable the CSM. You'll know if there's a problem if after disabling it, your boot drive is no longer recognized. Depending on your setup and situation, there are too many possible troubleshooting steps to go into in this video, unfortunately, but Dr. Google should help you find the solution you need. Now, if CSM is disabled, you can navigate to the advanced menu. In here, you may see several submenus. If so, navigate to the PCI settings menu and hit enter. In here, you should see above 4G decoding. If not, you either need to update your BIOS or your motherboard doesn't support it yet. If you do see it, navigate it and select enable. Once you do that, a second option of resize bar support should appear. Enable that also. Now navigate to the exit menu and select save and reset. Confirm your choices and hit OK. That's it. Smart access memory is now enabled, but whether it has any noticeable performance games in gaming is debatable. In the few games I tested, with the exception of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which did see a marginal improvement, all results were in the 5 FPS margin of error, so statistically the same. So let's move on to overclocking the card, which should net us some noticeable gains. Now, there are several tools you can use to overclock your GPU, but I found that the best tool for an AMD card is the AMD Radeon software, so that's what I'll be using today. You'll also need a standardized graphical benchmarking tool. I'll be using 3 Mark's Time Spy Ultimate. However, anything you have that is repeatable and produces a score is fine, so 
If you have a game with a built-in benchmark, you can use that. To start, I'm gonna open the AMD software and navigate to the performance menu and tuning. By default, it's set to default auto tuning. Yours may be set to the quiet or balanced preset. Either way, I'm going to now launch my 3D Mark benchmark. Select Time Spy Extreme and under the Custom Run tab, I'm going to disable the CPU test because we're only interested in the graphics score here. I'm going to click Run Custom and this will give us our base score from which we want to approve upon. And our base score is 7154. Back to the tuning menu, I want to select manual tuning and enable all my tuning and advanced controls. The first thing I'll do is increase my fan curve like this, which will allow the fan to ramp up as soon as you start a benchmark run and then back down once the run is over. This will help eliminate thermal throttling from affecting our results. Now, the biggest factor affecting any GPU performance is power restriction. So the first overclock we're going to do is maxing out the power limit. The reference RX 6800 allows a plus 15% increase. Now I'll run the benchmark again. And you see that gave us a gain of almost 160 points. Now, the other reason I use Time Spy is now I can scroll down and see where my GPU boost clocks were at. And for that run, it looks like we were at about 2240 megahertz. So back in my tuning menu, we can start adjusting our core frequency window. AMD GPUs operate on a min and max frequency, so overclocking involves dialing in that window to optimal settings. To start, I'm going to set the min frequency to the 2240 megahertz boost we saw in the benchmark results. I'm actually going to round it up to 2250 and then set the max frequency to 2400. I found that a 150 megahertz window is a pretty good starting point for AMD cards. Click apply changes and run the benchmark. Here we gained another 200 points and another 100 megahertz on our clock speed. So now I'm gonna bump up the min and max clocks by that 100 megahertz. Apply and run the benchmark again. This repeats here until at 2450 min 2600 max, I get a crash. So reset and now i'll back the clocks off by 50 megahertz each and here i don't see a crash but what i do see while running the benchmark is artifact you see those black or green lines and triangles this means my overclock is not stable so i'll just escape out of the benchmark This time I'm going to tighten our frequency window to just 100 megahertz by reducing our max clock to 2500 megahertz. This is where we really start dialing in a maximum stable overclock. From here, I started bumping the clocks up by just 10 megahertz until I got to 2440 min, 2540 max and again saw some artifacting. So I settled on a 2420 min, 2520 max as my frequencies, which is giving us a 578 point improvement over our baseline score. With the core clock dialed in, it's time to tune the VRAM. And because this GDDR6 memory is already pretty much at its limit in these cards, we'll do this more slowly. And I'll just start by changing the timings from default to fast. This in itself should give us the biggest boost and running the benchmark, I got another 47 points. From here, I'll just increase the memory clock by 20 megahertz at a time until I crashed at 2080 megahertz. 
So I backed it down to 2070, which is where I ultimately settled for a total improvement of 678 points. Now, while memory tuning, you may not actually run into a crash to know you went too far. You may just see some artifacting, but most commonly, you'll know you're going too far because your scores will start dropping as the memory is causing errors you can't actually see, but are affecting frame rates. So now we have a stable overclock, but that doesn't mean it's stable for every game you play. It's important to test it in games you'll actually be playing, and if you run into stability problems, you can adjust as necessary. The nice thing about the AMD software is you can save an overclock profile for an individual game, so you can add a game and make your adjustments and save it just for that game. So how does this overclock translate into real world gaming games? Well, for the six games I tested at 1440p, highest or ultimate graphics presets, I saw gains of between seven and eight and a half percent with the exception of Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which saw no gain. Which means I can set the profile for that game to default as there's no need to stress the GPU unnecessarily. Now, the last thing to note is that along with the game, temperature will also affect the stability of your overclock, which is why I set the fan to max out while under load. However, if a quiet system is important to you, you won't be able to be as aggressive while overclocking. As the GPU gets hotter, it'll reduce the core frequency. If your min frequencies are set too high for that, you run into instabilities or crashes. So the two ways to compensate are to either go back and start gradually reducing your fan speed until you reach a good balance between noise and performance and stability, or rather than maxing out your fans like I did at the start, set them to an acceptable noise level and dial in your overclock from there. This brings up the whole debate of if overclocking on air cooling is even worth it for the minimal gains you'll see. I'm not going to get into that. Feel free to debate it in the comments. My goal was just to show you how to achieve those gains. If I did my job, please hit that thumbs up. It really does help out with the algorithm and make sure you get subscribed. I typically only put out one video a week, so I won't overwhelm you. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.